I've been venturing into the world of English paper piece and I've been trying to do this now for about over a year unsuccessfully and now I've managed to just get it and there's some tips and tricks and some tools along the way that I'm going to show you that is going to really help you create perfect English paper piece in. This is without glue, I don't use glue in my video, I do it literally all by stitching. So let's start. I did get myself one of these boxes from Michaels. It's a American stroke Canadian store and it's really for like scrapbooking and photographs. It has all these different compartments in it and it's great for carrying all of my stuff when I'm doing English paper piecing. Because the great thing about doing English paper piecing is the fact that you can do this mobile, you can do this anywhere and that's one of the reasons why I picked it up because sometimes I just don't want to do sewing on a sewing machine and this is very therapeutic to me. So I'm going to show you like the compartments and what I actually put into these compartments as well. So I have everything handy when I want to do my English paper piece in. So let's start from the start. In one of my compartments I will keep all of my hexagon paper pieces because you do need paper pieces in order to do your English paper piece in. Now you can try and cut them out if you want. I just I couldn't be bothered with the hassle of it and I just bought pre-cut shapes. These you can reuse and if you're quite delicate with pulling them out like later on I'll show you, then you will be able to reuse them. I mean, if you do rip them, you can also put a piece of sellotape over the top of them just to repair them. So in order to prep these first, this is what I do. So in another one of my compartments, I'll keep all of my tools together. And what I like to do on these pieces of paper is to create a hole in the center of them some of them actually come pre-holed, but if you don't have any holes, then you can just get this single hole puncher and create a hole right in the centre. And then later on, we can actually pull these through. So of course you can do English paper piecing with scraps, but I actually wanted to keep it very consistent. So I bought myself four packs of this, they're like charm packs, mini charm packs and it has the full range of every single fabric and i've i've used this one before i love this design so i bought four packs of this and I, as you can see i've started to use it so i'm gonna gonna pull that out a second and also i bought myself some i got like half a meter of near enough every single color in this pack i'll show you in a second so this is my yardage that I got for the other colours. So when I'm doing red, I'm going to match them together with red and then I'm going to match it together with the pink and the green and so on and so forth. So in my other box here, I have cut myself some two and a half by two and a half inch squares to match these squares. And so I'll take one of these out and I'll take one of my next colours out. So I am going to need six of these and then one of these for the center then in my next two boxes for my english paper piece in i'll always keep my pin cushion with a really sharp small hand needle like so we'll put that back in there and then my other container has my my snips and my thread. Now I've used this particular thread which is Wonderfell and it really sinks in. I did used to use um, just a regular polyester but this one really fills in and I'll show you later on. It makes a huge difference with your English paper pieces so I highly recommend this thread and also some Wonder Clips and I'll show you how I use them. And then I have another container for all of my finished sections. The first part you can pretty much, you have to do it near an iron. The second part you can do from anywhere when you wanted to sew your English paper piece in. So I would recommend that you get a good deal of these hexagons going and then you could sit down in front of the television or whatever and then be able to sew the other sections together. And you'll see what I mean when we get started. 
I use one of these little irons sometimes, especially if I'm ironing out on in the garden on my deck. You probably see these irons where ladies have been using these at um, quilt retreats. They're really handy and they get super hot, so they're really kind of useful. So get your piece of paper, your English paper piece and piece of paper. You're going to put it on the middle here. Oh, and first things first, I'm just going to snip off just a little bit here of this fabric. Just a little bit. I'm going to do that on all four corners, like so. Well, I didn't want to do it, did it? I think this blade is getting a little bit blunt. There we go. So I'm going to put it back on my ironing mat. And this is why you can't really do this traveling. You have to get yourself all set up with a few hexagons. So I'm going to fold this over. And this is the part where most people will glue this down. And the reason why I don't use glue is I found it really difficult to get the paper off the hexagon when I've used glue. So this is my personal preference. And I've been more successful English paper piecing doing it this way than I have with using glue. So this is a without glue method, remember. So what I'll generally do now is make sure that is cut, that is really to the side of this paper. And then I'm going to put a wonder clip there. And then I'm just going to go around this hexagon, doing the same thing and pressing. Don't worry about the excess of this fabric. And then that's pressed. I'm going to get another wonder clip. And I'm going to clip that down. Just because keeps everybody down and into place. And then fold that over and press. So let me know, have you tried English paper piecing? Do you want to try English paper piecing? If like me, have you tried it and you weren't successful and it was kind of irritating? Let me know in the comments box down below because remember, your comments really do help my channel, guys. So if you can write a comment down below, that lets YouTube know that this is a good video. And then, clip, keep them going around, and then press. I really like the pressing because it gives it a nice, clean edge. And then press him down and then put the other clip down. I'm going to turn him around. So that's what you're going to end up having. And then this is where I'm going to end up basting everything into place. And another thing that I found out is don't try and baste too close to the top. Baste further down the bottom. And it actually, what happens is this part of the thread here keeps everything down and into place. So I'll show you how I baste this into place. So you're probably wondering why I'm using blue thread. Well, it doesn't really show up as much as what you think it does on a red fabric it actually does sink in trust me because when you use like a white thread it's way too visible whenever you're doing your joints together so either use a kind of like an olive green color or this really light blue I'm gonna cut this off i'm just gonna thread my needle Okay, so I'm going to take this wonder clip out here and then we're just going to join this in and then we want to lock that stitch in place. So, sometimes they will get caught around the wonder clips. And I'm going to go right through this hole here. And there we go, we've locked that into place. And then I'm going to go over to the next side and I'm going to come in at the bottom here. And then just loop back around again. I 
and then see what happens this actually pushes it down so I'm going to go around to the next side take that clip out and I'm going to join this in and just make sure that you go back around on itself just to secure it in like so then take this clip out and then you're just like basting it down and take this clip out and then thread this one through see if I can do this really close So you're just basting it. And then go into the next one. And this is where you're going to go through the loop. And then you're going to secure it. So you're kind of knotting it. And I would just do it again for a second time, just to be sure. It went out of the needle. Let me just manually do this a second. So you're going to do it with a single thread of thread. And then you're going to tie each part up, like I showed you. You go through and then go back on itself at each of these folds. And then you're going to turn it around. And then you're going to press this into place again on both sides because you want a nice finished press so you're going to press this one down and you're going to fold it over and you're going to press it again so now i might cause a bit of a stir because at this point in time i actually take the paper pieces out because there's too much paper right up to the edge here and i can't just nick that little piece of fabric because it's way too close so what I like about these scissors here, we get it in, they're not as pointy. So I'm just going to go into that hole that we made and I'm going to gently pull this out. And then because we've pressed this really firmly, this is still nice and pressed. And what I'll do now, again, is I'll press it back down. on both sides and then the paper is a little bit bent so I'll press the paper down so what I'm making you're going to need three solids well six sorry six solids and one like patterned fabric take one of your plain pieces and your patterned piece put it right sides together and join them exactly right sides together so it all matches all the way round and then to keep everybody into place put a wonder clip on each side of the hexagon like so and then we are going to start sewing the top bit here a single thread of fabric and then we're going to start in the corner and then going to go back through the other side oh it came out of course it came out because i'm on camera let me just do that again so come through the other side go back through again i'm just going to leave a tail there you go. So you want to go, you're going to go all the way down the side of this and you're going to do it right at the very top. You're just joining them together slightly. There's no sewing at a quarter of an inch. Do it right at the very, very top. So you're just slightly closing them up and you're going to go in and out of one side. I've tried the whole like just looping over and over and over. Don't do that 
because you can see the stitches so go through in one and out the other go through one and out the other go through one and out the other in one and out the other in one and out the other so you're going to try English paper piece and I want to know have I inspired you I guess you want to see what it looks like first let's see so this is what it looks like I've opened it up and you can't see the stitches I'm trying doesn't want to focus that close see that and when I've done it before you've been able to see stitches sometimes but you can't see the stitches doing it this way so basically what I do from here is press I find that constantly pressing is a good idea when you're doing English paper piece in there we go it's nice and flat so eventually you'll have something that looks like this and then when you're joining these sections together it's exactly the same way guys don't be afraid so now you're at this part here and this is really easy guys all you're going to do is turn it over and make sure that it's right sides together and then just sew this section into place like we just previously did so i'm going to start at this end i'm going to make sure that i've created a knot so it's not going to unravel on me it popped out it's the second time i've done that okay i'm gonna leave a little tail see Whoop. and then you are just going to go along again go in oops getting in the way just make sure that this is nice and straight so just hold it together with your thumb and then just go in and out like so so join me next week I'm going to create a few of these and then I'm going to show you what I actually do with them create a project with my English paper piece section so I'm going to create like a whole bunch of fabric with it so don't forget to subscribe to this video leave me a comment down below if you have enjoyed this if you've learned anything new thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you next week bye bye